Hi, I'm John Phillips. I'm Christina Bonington. And Christina, we made it back from CES 2012 100% alive and intact. It's true. It was a long week. You're kind of sick, but um, we're back. <laughs> I am sick, uh, but we're ready to show some of the best videos from the show. The first one is the Lumia 900, which you reviewed. Checked out. Let's take a look. Here we are at CES 2012 with the Nokia Lumia 900. It's one of two new Windows phones debuting on AT&T this year. The Nokia Lumia 900 is slightly larger than its sister, the Lumia 800, which came out in 2011. It's got a 4.3 inch AMOLED screen. Inside, it's got a 1.4 megahertz Qualcomm processor. Since everyone loves taking pictures with their smartphone, the Lumia 900 has an 8 megapixel rear facing camera with a Carl Zeiss lens. On the front, it's got a one megapixel camera. The Lumia 900 looks a lot like the Lumia 800. It's got a similar form factor. On the side, it's got a volume rocker, a power button, and a shutter button for the camera. The Lumia 900 runs Windows Phone Mango, and it'll be out sometime in the next few months. So that was the Lumia 900. Uh, there was another Windows phone that you dug as well. Yes, uh, the HTC Titan II. It has a 16 megapixel camera, and it's big. <laughs> and it's the other big Windows phone of the show. And so uh, another uh, video we want to show you is John Bradley, who's the senior editor of Wired Print Magazine, and he's going to be trying out uh, these Sensix goggles. Essentially, it's a virtual reality goggle system, and uh, he looks pretty trippy trying them out. We're here at CES at Digital Experience, a press event for the show, and this thing on my head is called Smart Goggles. It's a virtual reality helmet. Right now I'm playing a game in which I'm a, a robot smashing a city. I can jump up and smash buildings. Uh, it's an Android-powered unit. There's actually a 1.2 gigahertz Android device in the helmet here. And these little circles in front aren't decorative. They're actually motion sensors. So you can use your hands to interact with the games as more games become available. This is kind of a proof of concept uh, prototype, but the company actually hopes to bring this to market by the end of the year for under $1,000. And I got to say, it's, it's pretty fun. They're kind of heavy. They're a little hot. I can't hear that well, but I'm smashing a building, and I mean, that's really all that matters. That was cool. Didn't I hear that John kind of broke that when he took it off? That's right. I, I heard that a piece flew off as he was removing the prototype, but it's prototype technology, not his fault. And these things happen at CES. Uh, the next video is Christina, uh, I guess you would say demoing <laughs> the loudest iPod dock in the world. This is a ton of music. Literally, it weighs almost a thousand pounds. This is the iNuke Boom. It's a $30,000 iPod dock from Behringer, who's been making audio products for over 20 years. Inside, it's got a lot of cool tech, including two custom-made dual 18-inch subwoofers. It'll blow girls' clothes off. This thing pumps out 10,000 watts of power at 131 decibels. It's like having Motorhead in your living room. If you want to put this much boom in your room, it's going to cost you $30,000, iPhone not included. So wait a second, do I have this right? You said it will blow girls' clothes off. That's what they told me. Uh, we did not try that out on the show floor, um, although I did have to take my shoes off, shoes and socks off to sit on the speaker dock. Mm. Um, so I guess we got part of the way there. <laughs> <laughs> Very controversial, Christina. Uh, next up is another goofy product. It's a Sphero robot ball that you control with your uh, iPhone. At CES, it's no surprise to find the latest, coolest gadgets. Things like tablet, PCs, e-readers, or networked home appliances. But we're pretty sure we've found the coolest gadget that will drive your cats absolutely insane. It's called the Sphero. And it works because it has a three-axis accelerometer inside of it, pretty much the same one that you would find inside of your iPhone or Wii Remote. 
And it works basically by putting it down on the ground and use your iOS device or Android device to remotely navigate it through pretty much anything. A series of cones, you can do it up a ramp, uh, and the developers at Sphero have also included, uh, have also created an SDK which will allow you to create your own apps to pretty much make the Sphero do whatever you want. There's also included some games with it, a golfing game, a driving game, uh, and then in February they'll be releasing a Simon-like game involving colors, as well as a Space Fighter game called, you guessed it, Space Fighter. Now the Sphero is available at GoSphero.com and it retails for $129. But remember, to drive your cats absolutely insane, it's worth every penny. So I actually got to check out this Sphero robot ball recently, but my cat is too fat and lazy and I ended up just kind of rolling the ball into her while she laid on the Aww. ground. Well, you know, it's waterproof too. And That's so if you had a duck, your <laughs> duck could enjoy it as well in the water. <laughs> so uh, finally, we want to get into this uh, attachment for your iPhone. It's a panoramic lens attachment and Mike Isaac is the one demoing it. Hey guys, we're here at CES 2012. Now, I know you've seen a million and one iPhone camera lenses. This is actually a pretty cool one. The Cogito Dot actually films in 360 panoramic view, H.264 codec. So you can basically share any of your videos shot completely 360 around you. So uh, I put this on the ground, I lay it in the middle of my floor and I can see my parents, you know, sitting on the couch and my cat across the room crawling on the windowsill at the same time. Uh, it's going to be everywhere pretty soon in Apple stores and uh, online on Amazon.com as well as Apple online for uh, 80 bucks, which is not terribly pricey for, uh, for an iPhone lens. It's new, it's different, it's kind of funky and you can shoot video in a, in a weird way that, that I haven't before. So I knew Mike had a roommate, but I didn't realize it was his parents. Curious. Neither did I. So that wraps up the Gadget Lab podcast for this week. Uh, go to Gadget Lab to check out more stories and videos of CES, and we'll be back next week at this time.